In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters, brothers, families and fellow religious who are participating in this Eucharist, I welcome you all to this celebration this morning. Today is the third Sunday of Easter and we come to worship and to thank God in the context of this celebration of the Eucharist. We remember and pray especially for those affected around the world by the coronavirus pandemic. And especially we remember and pray for the victims of this pandemic in our own country. We pray for those who are worried, those who are tensed, and those who find it difficult to, to take their life forward these days. And the readings today place before us examples of people who were touched so deeply by the Lord when they recognized him, his, his presence in their life, they were transformed. And today God speaks to us, speaks to us very powerfully. Perhaps these days through all that is happening around us, he speaks to us very powerfully. Let's open our minds and hearts to listen to his voice, to experience his touch once again in the celebration of this Eucharist. His words will be spoken to us and we will receive his body and blood. Let's ask ourselves, are we open? Are we open for this encounter with the Lord? Let's pray that the Spirit of God Open our minds and hearts that we may deeply experience him in the context of this Eucharist. For the times we have failed to listen to him, to experience him, let us ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Sing to God. 
mercy brings to people on earth, worship with the King of heaven, praise and bless His holy name. loving Father, may your people excel forever in the renewed youthfulness of your spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty words and wonders and signs, that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life 
You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Psalm, your response. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Preserve me, God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. You yourself who secure my Lord. Lord, you will show me the path of life. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord before me always, with him at night, at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Lord, you will show me the path of life. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even my flesh shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to hell nor let your Holy One see corruption. Lord, you will show me the path of life. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand, bliss forever. Lord, you will show me the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with imperishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of your lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Father's 
According to Saint Luke, glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were walking with each other, talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the man who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women from our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly saying, Stay with us, for it is towards evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us, while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. 
Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, in the first reading that we just heard, we have the experience of Peter after the Pentecostal experience and how powerfully he bears witness to the Christ who is risen. He argues that it was impossible for Christ to be held captive by death. And therefore he tells it is equally impossible for them, the band of uh, apostles, to resist preaching. Preaching about Christ who was crucified and risen. Because they were a band of people, a group of people who really experienced the power of the resurrection. In the second reading again, Peter calls the attention of people to live worthy of their calling. Every religious, every Christian, every baptized person is inserted into the life of Christ. He or she, he or she is called to live a life in Christ and therefore witness to the life of Christ, the presence of Christ in the world, in the lives of persons whom we meet in our day-to-day -day life. And today's uh, gospel draws our attention to two aspects of Christian life. The liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the Eucharist that sustains our life. We as Christians celebrate the word of God, celebrate the body and blood of Christ. My dear friends, the sequence of the events on the way to Emmaus is very interesting note, to note, Luke being a astute storyteller. He beautifully speaks about the experience these disciples went through. Two things are very powerfully spoken. One, the man who joined them, Jesus, he illumined their minds. Their minds were open to the word of God. Their minds were open to all that Jesus had spoken to them during his lifetime. And at the end of the day, at meal, Jesus opens their mind again to the deeper experience they had of Jesus. At the table, when Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body took the chalice and said, this is my blood. And when you share this, you remember me. My dear brothers and sisters, they recognized Jesus in the very ordinary experiences that they had. They were reminded of no, they were, in other words, they resonated with the experience that they had when Jesus was alive with them. Then Jesus lived with them. And it was easy for them to believe that Jesus is alive, he has come back to life, and he lives with his disciples. We believe that Jesus is alive and active today among us. But, do we encounter him? Do we experience him? The scripture today very powerfully places before us that we need to be people who constantly witness to the experience of Jesus, our Lord being with us, walking with us, inspiring us, challenging us. 
And especially during these days, the world is going through a very, very difficult time. And we know how difficult it is for people to understand that God cares. If this pandemic is permitted on this earth, definitely God has a plan. And what is important is today we need to listen. Open our minds and hearts to listen to what the Lord is telling. The Lord is telling through you, through me, through everyone whom we meet in our day-to-day -day life. God is revealing himself, revealing his plans. But perhaps we are hesitant to believe. There is a beautiful story told of an abbot, superior of a religious community. You know, he was um, disturbed because the community members lived a very loose life. And he was finding it difficult to control them. They were fighting with each other, finding fault of each other, and all those kind of things. Everything that you can imagine. And the community was almost, you know, disappearing from the face of the earth. No new youngsters, no youngsters joining. So he thought of going to a spiritual director and asking him what to do. You know, the spiritual director told him, you go and tell the community members that there is a Messiah among you. And he is there among them. He comes back so enthusiastically, calls a community meeting and he tells them, you know, my spiritual director told me that the Messiah lives among us. My dear friends, from that day onwards, the community was transforming day by day, changing, growing, looking for the Messiah among them, who it is. Even the weakest one, they were able to recognize as someone different, someone unique. So they started accepting everyone. The community is totally changed, became a new community. Many people started joining them. There was, in other words, the presence of God. When people changed, when they were all looking for the Messiah in each other, there was a great transformation. My dear friends, this is what happens. When we look for the presence of God in the common faces that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. In the chapel when we sit, or in the socials when we meet somebody, in our own family, in our own, our, the members of our own family, when we look, when we see in them the face of Christ, then the society will be a different place. Today, let's ask for this grace that we may be able to get in touch with the Christ who lives among us. First of all, he lives in us, in me, in you, in everyone. The same way he lives in the other person whom we see every day. And the world will definitely be a better place. And all that we are experiencing today, our faith tells us, will definitely pass. God will reveal himself. He will reveal his plan to us. And we will be instrumental to bring, or in other words, to redeem the situation that we are in. Let's accept the power of the resurrection that we have all received. And when we live it fully, we live a new life. And may God bless you. I believe in God, the Father God Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered and Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come into the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The disciples returning to their village are sad and demoralized. The presence of Jesus and the conversation he has with them <coughs> brightens them up. 
At supper, as he breaks the bread, they recognize him. Let us now place our petitions before the Lord, saying, Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that through the devotional celebration of the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, they may lead the faithful to the risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. That the Catholic faithful may read and study the scriptures and encounter Christ in them. For the all of scripture leads to Christ and his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. For Catholic writers and preachers, that they may expound the knowledge and wisdom embedded in the scriptures and may faithfully communicate them to the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may the Eucharist enlighten us. For those who are sad or are in grief on account of unexpected turn of events, such as death of a dear one, separation from spouse or failure in some undertaking that their confidence may be rebuilt so as to move forward with confidence we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord may the Eucharist enlighten us. We also remember and pray for the people who are suffering especially these days because of COVID-19. We also pray for the medical professionals, social workers, security forces who try their best to keep the society in order and safe. That the Lord may continue to bless us all and especially those who are involved in controlling this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord may the Eucharist enlighten us. us. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that we may recognize the presence of the risen Christ in our lives and become enthusiastic witnesses of his message of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord may, may the Eucharist enlighten us. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who came to the assistance of his disciples as they were grieving over his death. The appearance of the risen Lord changed their lives. Give us the grace that we too may experience the presence of the Lord in our lives. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed be God, blessed be God forever, amen. Blessed be God, blessed be God.
blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this wine we offer, fruit of the wine, work of our hands. It will become the cup of life. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. humble spirit and contrite heart may we be accepted by you O Lord and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you wash me O Lord from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin let us pray friends that our sacrifice may be acceptable and pleasing to God our loving father may, may the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands <coughs> For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to new life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our gracious our Archbishop, and all the other bishops and the clergy and the entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that it be the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words Jesus our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace and the joy of this Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Peace be to you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an in eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and joy of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.
with you always until the end of time. Let all proclaim to the glory of the Father that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Let all proclaim to the glory of the Father that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord.